let's talk about my dividend portfolio. Now, this portfolio is something that I've set up a few years ago. And even though it's a dividend portfolio, so it only contains dividend paying stocks, I'm also going to add some growth stocks to it in the future. Now, the reason why I set this up was because I wanted to try something new back in the day. And when I learned about dividend paying stocks, it sparked my interest. So I created a separate account because I have the 401k, I have the Roth IRAs, etc, etc. But with my brokerage account that I'm using currently Ally, I set up my dividend portfolio and now it's a portfolio that manages itself. So I'm getting passive income through dividend payments and those dividend payments automatically get reinvested. So my dividend income is like a snowball effect. Also dividend investing to me is fun. It allows me to push my knowledge when it comes to analyzing companies using fundamental analysis, of course, and then buying them when they're selling at a discount. Also, dividend investing gives me confidence when it comes to investing because I'm in the driver's seat and I'm making the decisions. It's not like when you invest in an index fund, an ETF or a mutual fund where you have a fund manager that's making all the decisions. Also, if you know how to analyze companies and you know how to invest in the stock market, you're less likely to get taken advantage of because you will come across people that tell you to buy specific stocks. So you might hear friends tell you to buy specific stocks or even family members, or you might even go to a financial planner and he's going to tell you what you need to invest in. But if you have the knowledge already because you've been investing yourself, you'll be able to pick up people that are trying to bamboozle you a lot faster. And then of course, the last thing also, besides the passive income that I generate that keeps growing with my dividend portfolio, I can also take my investment portfolio and then pass it down to, let's say if I had kids, or even passing it down to family members. And then once they get it, they don't have to start from point zero because they already have an investment account that's spitting out passive income for them on a frequent basis. So just looking at my dividend portfolio that I currently have at ally.com, you can see that they have about 22 dividend paying stocks, actually 21 dividend paying stocks. And then I also have a BND, which is the Vanguard Total Bond Market ETF. Now, with the other stocks that I have in my portfolio, I'm getting dividend payments, of course. But then with my BND ETF, I'm getting interest payments. And I get these also on a monthly basis. The 21 stocks that I have are in various sectors of the stock market. Now, if I look at my dividend payments for the year, so if I do a year to date and I just look at my dividend income, you can see that I've been getting dividend checks on a frequent basis. When I did the calculation, I've received about 95 dividend payments so far. And if I look at it from a year standpoint, I will receive over 100 dividend checks, which comes down to around 8.3 dividend payments per month. When I looked at my previous month, I've generated a little over $220 in dividend income and my dividend income gets reinvested into buying more dividend paying stocks so every single month my dividend income grows so next month it's going to be more than $220 in dividend income so when it comes to the dividend payments that I do get currently I'm enrolled in a drip at Ally a drip standing for a dividend reinvestment plan this pretty much means that whenever I'm getting a dividend payment from a specific company let's say coca-cola that dividend automatically gets reinvested into buying more shares of Coca-Cola. Now, this is a great thing because you're not only getting dividend payments, but you're automatically buying more dividend paying stocks with your dividend. So it allows you to grow your dividend income. But one thing that you have to pay attention to is that even though drip is a good way to start when it comes to reinvesting your dividends, you still want to make sure that you're buying companies when they're selling at a discount. So you don't want to buy a company when it's overpriced. In that case, it would be better to not be enrolled into drip and just receive the dividend into your account. Do your fundamental analysis, having those companies that you want to buy on a watch list and then only buy them when they're selling at a discount. But if you're just starting out when it comes to investing in dividend paying stocks, just go the drip route. Don't worry about 
making sure that you collect all that dividend income and then keep investing it in companies that are selling at a discount. Because in the beginning, your dividend income is going to be small. It might only be a few dollars. So don't worry about buying those companies that are selling at a discount with just a few dollars. Also, not all brokerage firms allow drip. So always double check the investment firm that you're investing with if they allow drip investing. So when is it the best time to buy? Because I've already said you only want to buy as a value investor that's investing for dividend paying stocks. You only want to buy when the company is selling at a discount. So the first question is, how can you tell if a company is selling at a discount? If a stock is trading for a dollar, does that mean that the stock is cheap? On the other hand, if a stock is trading for a thousand dollars, does that mean that the stock is expensive? It's going to be hard to tell if you don't know what the underlying value is of that particular stock. Not because a stock is trading for a dollar doesn't mean that it's cheap. You still need to know the underlying value, of course. Think about it like this. Let's say you have a dollar in your pocket and a friend comes up to you and he wants to sell you a piece of bubble gum, just one piece, and he tells you, you know what, I'll sell it to you for a dollar. Now you're going to look at him crazy because a piece of bubble gum is worth less than a dollar. So you could get a piece of bubble gum for, let's say, 10 cents. So a dollar, it's way too overpriced. On the flip side, let's say you have $10,000 to spend and you want to buy a new car. And then all of a sudden you see that they are selling new Tesla cars for $10,000. That's a steal of the century because Tesla cars are worth more than $10,000 on the market. So you're actually getting the Tesla car at a discount. That's the way you need to look at investing in dividend paying stocks. You need to know what the value is of the stock before you actually go and add it to your watch list and then purchase it also. There are different ways that you can tell how much a company that's trading on the stock market is worth. Some investors like to look at, for example, the book value of a company. Other investors like to look at the earnings of a company and then they look at the P.E. ratio which is something that I've talked about in the past. The P.E. ratio is a great way of trying to figure out what the company is worth that is trading on the stock market because you're looking at the net income that a company generates, also called the earnings. If a company can increase its earnings, it also means that a company is going to be worth more. Let's say your friend has a company that generates $10,000 in net income every single year. He wants to sell it to you. So this business, let's say it's an e-commerce business, runs on autopilot, 10K a year flat. If he wants to sell it to you, and how much are you willing to pay for it? Let's say he wants to sell it for you for $1,000. You're spending on buying a company for $1,000 that generates $10,000 per year. So you'll pretty much have your invested capital back within two months. And anything after that is gonna be pure profit. Now, let's say that same friend came up to you and he told you, you know what? I have an e-commerce business, it's not doing too well, Every single month, I need to spend 5K in advertising just to get a few sales. So I spent 5K, but I'm not making any type of money. And I want to sell this business to you for $1,000. You're going to look at him strange and tell him that, no, I'm not going to buy a business that's not even generating any income. So that's why the earnings of a company is extremely important, how much net income a company can generate. And a great company can generate a net income that they can keep increasing year over year. On the stock market, we look at the P.E. ratio, the price divided by the earnings ratio. This ratio tells you the multiple of how much you're willing to pay for the earnings of a company. So a P.E. ratio of, let's say, 15, that means that you're willing to pay 15 times the earnings of a company. In essence, that means that you will get your original capital back within 15 years, if you look at it from the earnings standpoint. Now, I like to look at companies that have a P.E. ratio of 20 or less, 15 or less is even better. So that's how I decide when a company is trading at a discount or when a company is overvalued. Now, when do I sell a dividend paying company? I sell a dividend paying company if that company changes or updates its business model into a space that they're not familiar with. For example, if a company produces chocolate chip cookies and then all of a sudden they wanna expand the business and they wanna jump into the technology sector, that's a big red flag because this company is used to generating their income from selling chocolate chip cookies, but now they're jumping into a whole new industry. From a financial standpoint, you can already tell that there's going to be a lot of ups and downs, which might affect the dividend that they pay. Another reason why I also sell my dividend paying stocks is when the company cuts the dividend. So anytime something might happen economically, or even if the company is going through some 
turmoil and it affects their net income, they might slash their dividend that they pay to their shareholders. And then the last reason why I sell my dividend paying stocks is if a company stops paying a dividend. So there are companies that have been paying a increasing dividend year over year, but then all of a sudden there might be an economic crash, an economic downturn, and they just stop paying a dividend. That's a big no-no because companies pride themselves on paying out dividends to their shareholders. And especially if it's a blue chip company, those companies want to keep their shareholders. And a big way to keep their shareholders is by paying out a frequent dividend. Now, if a company pays out a dividend, but they might not increase their dividend as fast or even faster than inflation, I still hold on to that dividend. So for example, I bought stock in Walmart. And ever since I bought stock in Walmart, they've been pretty much lagging with their dividend growth. But the dividend that I do get, I just take that dividend income and invest it in another dividend paying company. So how do I check on dividend stocks? Because on average in the US, if you buy a dividend paying company, you get a quarterly dividend payment. So every quarter, that company that you bought is going to pay out a dividend. Some companies might only pay twice a year, others pay monthly, but on average, quarterly. Let's say you have a big list of companies in your portfolio, 30, 40, 50. It's going to be harder to manage and trying to figure out, okay, I'm getting my dividend payments. Are they increasing? Are they staying the same? Are they decreasing? Or did one of the companies actually stop paying a dividend? The way that I do it is I export all my dividend income in, let's say, an Excel spreadsheet, and then I sort it by month and by company, which allows me to see if the dividend payments that I've been getting for a specific company are actually increasing or not. Now, if they are not, like I said, I hold on to them. If they end up getting cut, I sell the company. And then if they stop paying a dividend, I sell that company also. For example, in the past, I had shares in Disney, but then the Disney company stopped paying a dividend. And I saw that by exporting all the dividend income in my Excel spreadsheet and then sorting it and filtering it the correct way and I noticed that Disney was not paying a dividend anymore so I ended up selling them so how many dividend paying companies should you have in your dividend portfolio the more you have the harder it is going to be to manage them because it's not only about looking at the dividend paying stocks that you have in your portfolio you still need to stay up to date with them at least once a year because every single year companies put out their annual report so you do want to go through the annual report and make sure that those companies are still dividend paying companies that you want to have in your dividend portfolio. I recommend having between 20 to 30 dividend paying companies in your portfolio, anything over 30, and it might get a little bit harder to manage. But 30 is still a good number, 20 to 30, because it allows for diversification. You don't want all your eggs in one basket when it comes to investing. And when it comes to dividend investing, you don't want all your eggs in one industry basket. So yes, I hope you enjoyed this topic on my dividend portfolio and how my mindset works when it comes to investing in dividend paying stocks. Let me know what your portfolio looks like, how many companies you're investing in, and then also what your long-term goal is for your dividend portfolio. Leave it in a comment section. Of course, like this video and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.